Hi everybody, my name is Nia um, and I chose my instructional strategy as the Picture Exchange Communication System, also known as PEX. Um, looking into this, I had gone into it knowing um, a lot about it, not a lot, but I've witnessed it many times. I haven't implemented it myself, but I do work at a pediatric therapy service clinic, um, which we do have speech therapy, um, and a lot of them utilize this instructional strategy with um, young kids, mostly with autism, some with like Down syndrome, there are many different disabilities, but most of the time it's with um, kids who are on the spectrum. Uh, learning about it, I knew that it was the use of pictures um, to communicate and how they kind of set up the pictures to be create a communication, like a sentence. However, I did not know that there were six phases going into it. Um, so phase one, it kind of just starts with teaching the child as a facilitator how to request something by using a picture. And then it kind of just builds up the skills. So that's phase one. And then going into like phase six is asking a child, um, like, what is that? And then them building a sentence to answer your question. Um, so then for my article, my article is called A Review of Picture Exchange Communication Interventions Implemented by Parents and Practitioners um, by three different authors, by Batul, Ali Saad Hassan, and then Devender Banda and Nora Griffin Shirley. And what these three authors did, authors did is they researched um, different studies. They were looking for articles that had um, a certain criteria, that a criteria consisted of that they were peer-reviewed, that um, the parents and practitioners facilitated PECs. Um, and then it was database and included PEX intervention. So to begin with, I believe it said somewhere that they had found like 500 articles that had these like keywords in there. And they dwindled it down to 13 articles in the end that they had thoroughly read through, made sure that I collected um, different information that reflected what their criteria and what they were looking for. Um, what they were looking for is how successful PECS is um, when it's utilized by parents and practitioners and how well they can utilize it um, and how effective they are. And then what they found was that it is effective. I The study was a little different because it was like a study on different studies, so I thought that was kind of confusing. But in the end, I do think that PECS is a great resource to use. However, with this study, I did, I thought it was just a little weird um, and that it was flawed a little bit. So instead of saying like nine out of the 13 studies found that PEX is effective, they just said most of them. So it could have been like seven studies compared to 12, which I think that's a huge gap. They didn't really use numbers. Um, so it wasn't very quantitative, but it was descriptive. Um, so I did think that that was a flaw because just, uh, it was just weird. Um, but yeah, overall, I do think that it was a good article. I just think that they could have been a little more detailed and use a little bit more of like a quantitative state rather than description. Um, and then with all the 13 studies, they did um, find that when parents and practitioners facilitated this, that in children with autism, their communication did increase, uh, which is a good thing. And that um, the training, the parents and practitioners, that they were able to catch on very easily and they were able to do it themselves. Um, you didn't need somebody to really come in and train you on it. So I do think that PEX is actually a great resource because not only is it, it's cheap and then it's effective and it's easy to learn and use by parents. Um, yeah, so I just thought it was a, 
it was a good article. Um, PAX is a good resource, but I think that the article could have been a little better. Thank you.